I've recently noticed that many right-wing papers seem to be openly pushing prostitution. A bunch of them have tabs for OnlyFans, where they run hundreds of stories, which are basically free PR for online thoughts. And this segment won't be any groundbreaking journalism. It'll just be pointing out this trend, warding you off the idea that this is a glamorous, alternative, empowering lifestyle, and taking issue with the clickbait that these outlets that many people think are on our side continue to peddle. Yeah, and this is something we actually whinge about quite often in mm. the office because we use some of these websites for sources. I mean, we use the full spectrum of the mainstream media to actually talk about the news. But... Um, Quite often, websites like the Daily Mail, the New York Post. Fox News are bad. Fox News as well now, yeah. Um, they all have the sort of wall of shame mm. of, of whores, basically. Yep. And um, I'm, I'm not exactly necessarily particularly prudish, but when I'm reading an article about politics, I don't want to see some bimbo's ass on, on the side of my screen. Um, I think there's a time and a place. <laughs> I don't think mainstream news is that place. Josh is like, I didn't realise I had my incognito browser open. I'm offended. Anyway, so <laughs> let's go on to this first article just to prove the point. And you know what? We're not going to be scrolling through most of these articles because I don't want to give these people more publicity than they deserve, but also because most of the photos are very explicit. They, they don't leave much to the imagination. So some married at first sight woman is talking about how escorting and doing porn is really empowering. And again, this is the headline. I'm a high class escort and will always choose my job over jealous boyfriends because my cashed up clients are more interesting. You see the PSYOP play out in real time, ladies. The 35-year-old has no plans to give up her X-rated job, despite previously saying she was going to stop prostituting herself to become a mother via IVF. So she's going to bring a baby into the world whose mum not only their dad isn't around, but whose mum's explicit material is online for all to see and mainstream papers are promoting it. They're not going to have a horrible time at school. I actually, I'm not sure it necessarily has to be online. I don't know. It is. She has an OnlyFans. Okay. <laughs> Why that, else that would they that. be promoting it? That's exactly. True, yeah. I actually stopped escorting because I was seeing someone and it was getting serious. But he had a problem with it. I, I wonder, wonder why. why. Way, you're, you're literally a <laughs> semen receptacle for other men, and he was like, mm, not too keen on that. I gave it up for him, but lost my independence and who I am. I love my job and all the interesting people I get to meet. They're presenting it like a, like a journey of self-discovery, like it's the same thing as the vapid 20-somethings that go to Thailand for fun. It's like, no. Get Don't call out Rory like that. I prefer not to speak. <laughs> Haley is now back doing porn and escorting full-time, having established herself as one of Australia's most in-demand sex workers. The former labourer, which was a much more noble profession, who has made more than 1.3 million performing hardcore acts on OnlyFans, said she was proud to work in her industry. Am I ashamed? F no, I'm absolutely killing it, and I would like to thank the media for the free publicity, she told Daily Mail Australia. Stop Funny that. giving these people attention and notice how they're presenting her earnings amounts and saying that oh she has she has become more empowered by throwing off the shackles of expectations mm -hmm. of a boyfriend who says maybe i should be exclusive if i'm going to give you all my money and time and patience see how it's being presented as a as a great idea ladies if you just want to make some money now what about the reality of prostitution well let's go from mail online who purports to be right wing to redux who purports to be feminist so you'd think that that it would be the other way around, right? Well, they did an investigation in April upon the, the mega brothels in the countries where prostitution is just legal. Now, in the UK, for example, I don't know what the law is in Australia. In the UK, you aren't allowed to advertise prostitution, but you are allowed to basically do it because it's impossible to police. But we don't have giant brothels on the street like they do with red light districts in Amsterdam or Berlin. They looked at the ones that are government regulated and, and seem perfectly on the up and up, right? Well, here's some examples. Pasha, a German mega brothel. A 28-year-old woman was robbed and stabbed to death by a sex buyer inside her room in 2003. The next year, two 15-year-old girls were found to have been working in the brothel after a police raid. The year after that, authorities uncovered weaponry and cocaine in the building and arrested 23 individuals who had fake documentation. Most of them were young African women whose ages could not be verified. Now, this isn't an outlier. The Leerkasten, Bavaria's biggest brothel, operated for years by a man implicated in contract killing. The Artemis in Berlin, a mega brothel famous for having hosted a socialist pro-sex worker streamer Hassan Piker, because obviously want him to run the communist utopia, was known to have been a site of sex trafficking involving the Turkish Hells Angels. The Turkish Hells Angels? What? Yep. I didn't realise that was a thing. 
They're franchising, I suppose. The Pussy Club Chain, an all-you-can-f brothel, in their own words, was discovered to have been involved in the trafficking of very young Romanian women who were raped up to 60, by up to 60 men a day until the point of collapse, and the Eros Centre brothel chain has been the site of several rapes, kidnappings, trafficking of adults and minors, as well as murderers. As well as murders happening, sorry. So, not an outlier. So, stop presenting prostitution as a glamorous trade and lifestyle choice, because this is the kind of people that make up the clients and the pimps that are running it. So, a bit more honesty would be great, but, but maybe, okay, maybe because she's running an OnlyFans, which requires her to meet nobody, uh, it requires her to have no overheads. She's she's fully self-owned. Maybe that's a good thing, right? Well, well, Mail Online seems to think so because it has an OnlyFans tab. Oh, for goodness sake! There are like thirty odd pages of stories on it. <laughs> it's just I feel sorry for you. It's a PR firm, the Hordem. What? Why are we? And, and I have a friend who works in the print Daily Mail, and I raised this with him a little while ago, and he went, "Different team, mate. We're so embarrassed." But like this this is just. Gossip rag nonsense. Aren't we the same country that tried to remove page three, as in where it'd have topless women yep. and stuff like that? And now it's basically just like full on porn. Yeah, instead. now now when I'm reading Prime Minister's question summaries, I have to see Lizzo in a bikini and Demi Rose's gaping bum hole being promoted to the <laughs> sidebar, I suppose. Thanks. It's great. <laughs> Cheers, Daily Mail. Brilliant. Um Speaking about the realities of OnlyFans, so they, they keep talking about the earnings potential. Not not quite true. So I first learned of this information that I'm about to present to you in Louise Perry's book, The Case Against Sexual Revolution. Harry and I did a book club for it on the website, and if you pay us five quid a month, you can help us keep the lights on and get loads of exclusive content that you wouldn't get otherwise. So you get in tomorrow's news today in, in this particular thing we did last year. This is the economics of OnlyFans. So they, there, was a, there was a breakdown. So in 2019, OnlyFans had 60,000 content creators and 7 million registered users. Now. During the pandemic, that went up exponentially because people spent lots of time at home and so they didn't have other income revenue streams and lots of people became addicted to the sort of material. And so there were lots more women getting on it and lots more men paying for the content. So looking at the Google growth trends, if you go over to the next article, please, John, it's safe to say they now have at least 10 million users a day. So the top account makes something like $100,000 a month. The median account, how much do you think they make a month? The average OnlyFans user. The, the thing that, that these newspapers are pushing on women as an empowering, glamorous lifestyle. Um, £15,000. £108. £108. £180. $180. $180 for ruining your propriety, your dating prospects, and <laughs> never being able to scrub naked pictures of yourself on the internet. So, uh, at a reasonably paying job, that's a day's work. And yeah, that's for a month. Maybe two. And two days wage. For a... For your soul. for a month, yeah, for a month's earnings. Wow! So the top one percent integrity is really cheap, apparently, because they're missold a lie that it's glamorous. Mm -hmm. The top one percent of all accounts make thirty three percent of the money. It's a Pareto distribution, of course. It is the top ten percent of accounts make seventy three percent of all the money. This isn't an eighty twenty rule; it's an eighty fourteen rule. Most accounts take less, take home less than one hundred and forty five dollars a month after commission. The modal revenue is zero dollars, and the next most common is four ninety nine. So you're actually more likely to make nothing. <laughs> Not good. I feel like if if all the women in the world knew this, there would be no OnlyFans people, or there'd be very, very few. There'd still be the celebrities, and there'd be a few people still ensnared by it because it's being pushed by right-wing papers as a good and self-enriching idea. Now, they use the Gini Index in this article, right? to compare it to countries. So the index of zero implies that it's a communist utopia. It's the most equal economy possible. A value of one implies that one greedy capitalist monopolizes all the wealth. So the Gini index of OnlyFans is 0 0.83. Which is higher than any country in the world. Yeah, the most unequal society in the world is South Africa with 0 0.68. So OnlyFans is less equal than the former apartheid state. But still glamorous, <laughs> still enriching, right? Definitely not the press and porn providers making loads of money off of the free misery of millions of women, but, but fine. Let's look at how the Daily Mail reports OnlyFans. Um, so they, they reported this particular survey. If you go back, please, John. This survey is an OnlyFans dating statistics. They asked a bunch of creators. So this was a survey of 500 creators. And 
that they said that 47% of creators find dating challenging. 42% have had a relationship end once they've told their significant other about OnlyFans. And 31% have had jealousy from their partners due to financial earnings or maybe the fact that they're getting naked on camera, right? So they've said, have you found it challenging to maintain a dating life while being an OnlyFans creator? And 47% said yes, and 32% said somewhat. Have you experienced judgment? Frequently, 37, sometimes 42. Have you ever disclosed your career? Sorry. That's too few, surely. As in, surely everyone judges them. It's only well, at least behind their back. Yeah. <laughs> Have you surrounded yourself by only women who tell you that it's empowering just so they can sabotage the most pretty girl in the group and take them out of the dating pool? Probably. I, I have told Louise Perry this. I, I think on, OnlyFans support, like sex positive women, is just intrasexual competition by women who want to sabotage each I other. I think there's a, a, a decent portion of women who will just tell their friends whatever they think they want to hear as well, in that they're, they're so desperate not to be shunned or seen as rude or, or, or mean to them that they will just say anything to actually have a group of friends, which is sad because yep. I think male friendships, generally speaking, tend to be more based on who you honestly are. And I think that it's a shame, actually. You tell me when I'm being a dick all the time, and I appreciate it. I know, I'm more than happy to do it. All right, you can lease off a little bit more. So don't, don't be too gleeful. Okay, you know we've got a smile for the cameras at least. We'll punch up after. So have you have you ever told your OnlyFans career to your partner? And twenty seven percent they were supporting and understanding. Thirty one percent they said they were hesitant but eventually accepted. So you nagged him into submission. Forty two percent said they were uncomfortable and ended the relationship. This is the reality. If you have expedient beauty and you make next to no money off of it, or even if you turn it into a career. Guess what happens? You will be lonely long after your beauty expires and all of your customers move on to the next one. Have you ever faced threats or harassment because of your OnlyFans content? 35% said never, 48% said sometimes, 17% said frequently. So it's not nearly as safe as actual in-life prostitution as they would have you believe. You can still be stalked. Plenty of people I'm sure have. Have you ever faced challenges balancing your personal life and OnlyFans? 46% said it very challenging. Do you believe being an OnlyFans creator has, has impacted your ability to find a long-term partner? 37% said greatly. 44% said somewhat. So that's the overwhelming majority have said, basically, I'll be alone after I've done this. And once you've uploaded, you don't know if you're going to make money until you've uploaded. So you've got to put those pictures out there in the first place that you can technically never take back if someone screenshots and downloads them. So you could basically be ruining your life for free. Okay, all right then. Um, have you ever faced challenges in trust in relationships? 40% said yes, 39% said somewhat. Has your dating life been improved by OnlyFans? 6% said it improved it, 76% said it hadn't had any impact. So if you read dating as, I'm having hookups, then sure, but people have already said it's impacted my long-term dating. So they're still having sex now. When it gets into the future, they're not going to have a husband and kids. 18% said somewhat. Uh... They're not people to introduce to your parents, are they? No. No, they're not. Particularly if they decide to Google them. <laughs> not fantastic. So, so all of this is, is really, really bad, right? So 52% so said that partners have been jealous of their OnlyFans content, and 46% said it has interfered with maintaining a healthy relationship. So none of these statistics bode well. Let's look at how the Daily Mail reported this. Go over. We can't scroll down this article again, because some porn star has her breasts out. Thanks, Daily Mail. I'm not joking about this. The majority of this article are testimonials from the highest paid stars who say how good it is to democratise their self capitalization because they're open-minded and the people they date really accept it. So again, if you read date as I'm having directionless sex with lots of people, then of course, because you're selling sex of yourself. But when it gets past your beauty, we've already seen how loads of people say, well, I worry about my long-term prospects. So we, we have all the data from the previous article that was honestly representing it. Daily Mail just talked to a bunch of porn stars that are making loads of money and say, see how empowering this is, ladies? You're being psyoped. It's not good. So if we go to this next one as well, just to, just to be really ridiculous, again, we can't scroll down. This is the kind of material that Daily Mail publishes. Brazilian OnlyFans star claims she is a victim of hot woman phobia after getting kicked out of a supermarket over her barely there outfit. I actually saw this article and it was ridiculous. She was basically <laughs> naked. Yeah, she had a white top on with no bra and shorts that were cut off where her bum crack was out with the pockets showing. <laughs> and Daily Mail keep putting photos of it walking around, treating her as if it's somewhat serious. And then they link to her OnlyFans. This, this is an infringement of freedom. I, well, I must say, this, this woman being kicked out for being indecent in a private company. Oh. 
Shut up, libertarian. This is why people hate you. I'm my, being sarcastic, my point, Connor. My point, I, I'm agreeing my, with you. <laughs> my point is that, that, okay, you know how unspecified Bud Light um, ambassador is a product of algorithms? So you get you get more extreme and more ridiculous in the content to generate outrage from both the left and the right, because no, no press is bad press. This is the same thing. The fact that these papers are pushing it and they've they've got rage bait from us, even though we're not really showing it, but they definitely do on Twitter. And then it, it promotes her material for her. You're just generating more and more people to become victims of the algorithm because it's really profitable because they get vicarious attention and actual money. And so you're ruining people's lives because you want clickbait, they want clickbait. And so everyone goes home miserable in the end. Okay, can we can we have some serious journalism instead? Mm -hmm. That'd be that'd be great. So New York Post also has a giant tab of this. Again, I'm not going to scroll down because they have about 100 odd stories on the same thing. And bear in mind, these were the guys that endorsed President Trump in the last election and broke the Hunter Biden laptop story. So they've actually done some important stuff, but they sort of pollute the well with this weird tabloid hypersexual garbage. Following them on Twitter is a bit of a roller coaster because there'll yep. be some good and serious journalism where you're just like, wow, you did a really good job. And then there'll be this. Stuff like this, perhaps? Yeah, Let's yeah. go on to the next article that I found on Twitter from New York Post. I'm a cr proud Christian porn star. God put me on earth to enjoy sexual pleasure. No. <laughs> no. I no. I haven't read the Bible in a while, but I don't remember the, that part. Do you want a quote from Jesus? Maybe. Go on then. Um, those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be their God and they'll be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts and the idolaters and all liars will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur, and this will be the second death. I feel like um, condemning uh, birthday party magicians <laughs> alongside the rest of those is a bit harsh, but well, I they, mean, they are pretty boring sometimes. Depends what they're making the balloon animals out of. Look, <laughs> point being, Jesus wasn't that tolerant, neither was the Apostle Paul, and he basically said you're going to burn in hellfire. So I don't think God put you on earth to do that. And if for people that are saying he's making it about God again, she brought it up! It's just yeah. a classification error. Sorry, you don't mm. get to subvert an entire religion just to try and make money. No, I would make the same point, and I am not religious, so yeah. I think it's fair. So, so she gave an interview to the Daily Star, and she said, God's message has been abundantly clear. I'm here to be a porn star. This is my way of serving. That's not what you meant by be on your knees. <laughs> the mum of four previously worked as a high school teacher. Oh, for goodness sake. When we say there are groomers in schools, hmm. Before I left teaching, I felt super disconnected from myself and also God. I didn't know what my life's purpose was or how I was meant to help others. What, by getting them addicted to internet porn? To create parasocial relationships and extract their wealth and attention when they could be having a relationship instead? Lovely, yeah, you're definitely serving. The ex-educator admits she initially felt ashamed of her X-rated escapades. She still should. Before she slowly began to realise that her strict Christian upbringing was the cause of her guilt. I now reject any teaching or institution that depicts God as an entity to be feared or judged by. So you reject God. Like, mm -hmm. that, that's... that's Also, a strict Christian upbringing is not what makes you feel guilty. Uh, Self-respect is normally what makes you feel guilty here. Also, strict Christian. I mean, if the standard is, I want to get shagged on camera, I don't... Like, that, mm -hmm. That's not particularly strict. Uh, sorry, it's not like they're tying you to the masturbation cross, is it? God is loving, not fearful and accepting, not judgmental. We're meant to enjoy and embody them fully as, my, as God has intended. I work with hundreds of women all over America, Australia, Europe and elsewhere. I'm helping those clients break through the same shame and guilt that's been imposed upon them for wanting to be free to express their sexiness. See, they are propagating more miserable women and the New York Post and Daily Mail are doing their PR for them. So I wanted to finish with some good news. How about this? So Pornhub has blocked use in Utah because Utah passed an age verification law. How curious. I wonder why they couldn't operate. So MindGeek has blocked access to all of their websites in Utah because Utah have passed a law that requires you, just as if you wanted to buy physical pornography or cigarettes or alcohol, to provide some kind of age verification rather than just that little tick box that obviously has stopped every child from accessing it. I mean, what would people be adding images of their ID? I can imagine that that would put off a lot of adults as well, if that was sure. the case. I don't know how it works. Sure, I agree. It probably would put off a lot of adults because they're accessing really weird material. But that doesn't mean that children should be allowed to access it. Like, okay, adults might be discouraged from buying a porn mag in person because mm -hmm. they have to go out and get it and hand over their ID. That doesn't mean we just don't provide ID when you're buying porn mags and allow children mm -hmm. to buy it. I'm... <laughs> Although in this case, I don't feel especially strongly. Normally, I'm against the notion of adding 
limits to things in case children access them. The default should be parents should be preventing children from going onto websites. That- should should Amazon require age verification to buy alcohol? Yes. Same thing. Exact same thing. Come on, man. Like the like I know I know I know your I know your tendencies are against government surveillance, so are mine, but this is just a sensible thing. Mm-hmm. Like the and the To inter- be fair, the, the Amazon idea is annoying because they I remember my mum, who is obviously not younger than me, yeah. um, tried to order some alcohol and they asked her for ID and she didn't have any because she's, you know, in her sixties. So it, she doesn't have a driver's license or a passport. Not to hand when you go to the door. Oh, but that's different. As in, if you're ordering at checkout, that's what I'm saying. Okay, all right. Yeah, if if you're obviously over the, over the age of whatever when you're being given it because you've already ordered it, then that's just a weird inconvenience. But if you're ordering it at checkout, then and that's the same th- thing here. It's it's at point of use. You should have to provide ID. So the age verification requirements have been proposed in at least eleven other states after Louisiana had passed it. So Louisiana were the first one to do this. And now Utah have done it, including Mississippi, Virginia, Florida. Oregon, South Dakota, Minnesota, Arizona, West Virginia, California, and Kentucky. Now, the reason I bring this up is because prohibitions work. Pornhub receives 130 million visitors a day, and it's still available in Louisiana despite the age verification law. So it's blocked in Utah, available in Louisiana. But a spokesperson told CNN that since the law went into effect, traffic from the state has fallen by 80%. So, how much of their business model were people that should not have been accessing this content? And if they're looking at it in Utah, are they making the calculation that, okay, to put in the age verification infrastructure for this state would be more expensive than the amount of people we would retain? That's just a simple thing. And of course, they were counting miners using this in their traffic reports because they had to sell it to advertisers. So of course they want lifelong addicts using the service, even though they're not meant to. So my point is, these companies are predatory, evil. They're going to make you sell your soul for literally no money. They're going to stop you from having long-term relationship prospects, both the women that participate in it and the men that are addicted to it. And it's kind of weird that Fox, Daily Mail, and New York Post keep promoting it for free. They're acting as their PR agency. So so don't think the corporate press is ever on your side. And ladies, don't be a whore. Go out and find a husband and, and be happy instead. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site. Such as the Contemplation series, this episode on one IQ is not a good measure of intelligence. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotusseeders underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.